Jay Crowley, who worked for Clinton as the Assistant Secretary of State for Public Affairs uh, and as a spokesman for the U.S. State Department. We also have Cheng Li, a director of the John L. Thornton China Center and an expert on China relations. And also joining us is Alan Lickman, a professor at American University who can boast correctly of predicting the outcome of all U.S. presidential elections <laughs> since 1984. You deserve since a medal. Since I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve a medal, for, uh, sir. But let's start with you, PJ, because you have advised Hillary Clinton on foreign policy in the past. Jim said she's going to have to separate herself from Obama. How does she do that, considering she was Secretary of State for the first term? Uh, is she, what is her foreign policy? Is it different? Well, I think, first of all, we should be humble as we sit here in April of 2015, what the world looks like two years from now uh, could be dramatically different than, than what we think you know, today. You know, think back to 2000, for example, and George W. Bush and Al Gore were talking about you know, a Social Security lockbox, you know, and nine months mm -hmm. later, the world did fundamentally change. Um, but if you go back in history, obviously, and, and Hillary Clinton will be battling history in a couple of respects. You know, obviously, you know, would be the first woman, as you said, you know, to occupy the Oval Office. And, you know, since we established term limits, we've gone, you know, in, in the past 25 years, you know, eight uh, Democratic years, eight Republican years, right. you know, eight Democratic years. But, you know, for those of us who are of a certain age, we can go back to 1989 and the, the uh, you know, the transition from Reagan to Bush, you know, was, was not, was but very the, hostile, actually. So, yeah, and, and, and George H.W. George Bush had a, a, a remarkably distinct foreign policy than his predecessor. That's true, but, but um, where are the differences? Because she authorized uh, the Iraq war in, while a senator. She wanted the surge in Afghanistan far more uh, than her president, uh, Obama. She was potentially tougher on sanctions in Iran, wanted to maybe arm the Syrian rebels earlier. Is that what we could see, a more, a, a more a hawkish mm -hmm. president, if she gets elected? Well, I, I think in, in fairness... Or is that it, just the candidate speaking? I mean, we, we've gone through two electoral cycles, you know, George... Uh, w. Bush, it was uh, ABC, anything but Clinton, and you had, you know, Obama was anything but Bush. You know, now you are able to reestablish kind of a balance. I do, I do think that Hillary Clinton, you know, is will be more comfortable, you know, employing military force if necessary. But part of that will also be, you know, the fact that the economy, while it's not necessarily where everyone wants mm -hmm. it to be, has improved to the extent where. Uh, you know, I think people, uh, you know, there, there's not necessarily going to be an Iraq syndrome as there allegedly was a Vietnam syndrome. People do recognize that there are still, you know, issues out there, the Islamic State being yeah. first and foremost among them. And I think they recognize and, and, and polls would suggest that we're prepared to use the limited use of force, you know, in the pursuit of, of national interests. And she's comfortable in that area. So not much difference there from uh, President Obama. Cheng Li, I want to I bring you in because Hillary Clinton, of course, is seen as one of the authors of the pivot to Asia, sure. the rebalance. She uh, uh, wrote that essay, America's Pacific Century. What do people in China think of Hillary Clinton? Well, it depends on who you ask and uh, who uh, the, the person in the leadership you ask. I think in general that the people have tremendous respect for Hillary Clinton because of her expertise and uh, in foreign affairs, especially uh, Asia Pacific. If uh, you not think the, Asia, the pivot to Asia is to contain China, but rather engage China. There is uh, that fear, though, isn't there? Well, um, people have a mixed feeling. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, Hillary Clinton has been popular among some people uh, because uh, this is, uh, she is the person who, uh, without her uh, input, there will be no Shanghai Expo in you know, 2010 when she was Secretary of State, she really pushed for that for the for American Pavilion. She also person to promote uh, what we call the 100,000 uh, strong, which emphasized education exchange, also resonates very well among the Chinese. You're, you're talking about her smart power initiatives, yes, which, uh, of course, she's been legendary at the State Department for, uh, for pushing. You think that uh, that delivers on the relationship long term rather well, than the, the, uh, the short term crises that do come up from time Well, to at time? least that the people think that uh, she may not be ill intended to contain China, and uh, this is a way to engage China. But of course, some people, maybe in the leadership, are also concerned about her toughness on the when it comes to uh, military modernization in China, especially in the South China Sea. Her remarks uh, sometimes uh, you know, irritate the Chinese leaders. But also, uh, for a long time, Harry Clinton emphasized human rights, yes. and especially women's rights. And she recently called Chinese government to release five women you know, uh, activists on women's rights. 
So these people actually uh, were released just a, a few days ago. So uh, of course, it depends on who you ask in China. Some people are inspired by her you know, call for uh, human rights and, right. uh, and et cetera. What? But some people are concerned about the toughness in foreign policy. But there is a competitive uh, thing, obviously, with, with China and the US. Myanmar, for example, she was really behind that policy of US engagement in Myanmar. And co some could say competition uh, against China. Uh, Absolutely, that uh, most of the Chinese leaders probably will interpret uh, some of the advisors uh, with Hillary Clinton more interested in pushing these kind of issues. But they see her in a more comprehensive way because they, they have a relationship with her and her husband for a long time. Some of the leaders really like her, admire her. Yeah, but I mean, this is the nature of yes. the tension inside sure. the U.S.-China relationship. I mean, her first trip you know, overseas as Secretary of State, you know, was to China and the Asian and Pacific first lady, region. First lady the By the yeah. same token, she <laughs> also was, um, you know, at the uh, APEC summit yes. and, and, and in Vietnam and delivered a very tough yeah. message, you yeah. know, uh, on, on issues regarding the South China Sea, which, which actually engaged her very significantly, <laughs> you know, with the, with the countries in the region that are, are understandably worried about a, a revisionist uh, China. So, I mean, the relationship is obviously complicated and, and uh, her views will be viewed very differently uh, on all different levels. Alan Lickman, you are an expert on the Clintons. You've been covering them since uh, <laughs> Hillary Clinton was a first, well, even before she was first lady. Any, Aging me already. Huh? <laughs> so, so, uh, are there any foreign policy snafus uh, up, out there that, that could uh, derail her campaign? Uh, I think of the, obviously, the, the tragic killing of the American ambassador in Libya at the consulate in Benghazi. Is that one? And are there others? You know, Benghazi has been investigated, perhaps, as much as Watergate to this point. There have been so many investigations of Benghazi that unless something brand new comes out, the public definitely has uh, Benghazi fatigue. But of course, there are lots of areas around the world, you know, the Ukraine, North Korea, anywhere in the Middle East, China, South Asia, where there is always the possibility of a gaffe or a mistake. I'm reminded of Gerald Ford in 1976 when he said the Eastern Europe was not being dominated by the Soviet Union. It practically blew his campaign out of the water. I'm glad you mentioned the Soviet Union, Russia, and the reset <laughs> button. <laughs> Hillary Clinton <laughs> hit that button uh, uh, with Sergei Lavrov. Literally, she gave the yes, button. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's, um, what happened there, and will that be a negative uh, running, considering the amount of time and energy personally she invested um, in? Well, had Mitt Romney decided to run you know, as a Republican mm -hmm. candidate, he would have said, hey, I told you so, because he, yeah. he said during That's the right. He said Russia was the biggest threat. Yeah. Exactly right. Look, the, the reset was designed for uh, Dmitry Medvedev, you know, the mm -hmm. president of Russia at yeah. the time. And in fact, it did work. And Hillary Clinton will point to you know, uh, the Russian abstention you know, in the United Nations that produced the Iranian, the sanctions against Iran, it has set the stage for the negotiation that is still ongoing. Uh, it wasn't intended for Vladimir Putin, and clearly once Putin, you know, re resumed his presidency, the relationship has, you know, fundamentally changed. Um, I mean, she will have things that she has to explain in terms of, you know, the intervention in Libya that hasn't worked out as anyone would have designed, right. you know, the tension you know, in, in, uh, uh, you know, it, with Russia, and I think that's where, to borrow a phrase from Marco Rubio, it will be, you know, as much as she does have a record al along with Obama, this will be about what are you going to do, how are you going to use American power going forward, right. and she is by far the most you know, experienced mm -hmm. you know, to talk about foreign policy. Let me policy add one thing campaign. quickly here. Sure. You cannot judge anything about a president's foreign policy from what they say during the campaign. <laughs> George Bush in 2000 said, I want a humble foreign policy. We've been telling people around the world too many times what they ought to do. We need to walk softly, and of course, the next eight years were just the opposite. <laughs> uh, although, although, in fairness, Obama said he was going to end the Iraq oh, uh, War, uh, and he did, only to see it restart again. Restarted again, again right. <laughs> you never know. Uh, I think that's all about events. You know, we can plan, we can yes. predict, we can have policy. The world policy. will get a vote sure. here. Absolutely right. Absolutely.